Hello everyone, welcome to class series and in this video, we're gonna be learning the short summary of the chapter Japan and Brazil through a traveler's eye. In this chapter, basically, we have two parts to learn about Japan. First, Japanese manners and second one, traffic in Brazil. So let's look into our first part that is Japanese manners. Within 15 minutes after you have landed in Japan, you will learn that the people of Japan are an exquisitely well-mannered people who live on a hopelessly overcrowded island. Consequently, their living space is very limited and so they do not have any privacy, yet the people respect people's privacy in a different way. Their courtesy serves a double function. They exhibit such polite behavior that their courtesy itself serves as a substitute for privacy. The writer supports his opinion with as an example. For example, he says one finds red telephones in the streets, shops, halls, of hotels, etc. and the instrument is placed on a table or a counter. They do not have space to spare for telephone booths but any person can conduct his most confidential business transactions, even intimate love quarrels in public and in perfect privacy without being apprehensive about any passerby overhearing you. The author empathetically says that the person's telephone receiver is his castle. The writer then gives his observation about the Japanese obsession with Boeing. He calls it a mania because everybody keeps Boeing to everybody else. He remarks that people bow to each other with the solemnity of a courtier with a great deal of natural and inimitable grace. He comments that through Boeing is like shaking hands or kissing the cheek. It is Contier, more formal or more or oriental but also infectious. Then he says that Boeing is so commonly seen everywhere that even the onlookers start Boeing through not the right way as the Japanese do. We bow too deeply or not deeply enough or we bow to the wrong man at the wrong time. Secondly, we do not clap our hands in front of us, which is considered a bad way. Or we may clap the hands in a bad way, which is considered even worse. Next, the writer tells us that the Japanese have a complicated hierarchy in bowing. Who bows to whom, how deeply and for how long. Then the author cites an incident that happened in America. He tells us that in one of the American states, there was a traffic law which laid down that if two cars met at an intersection, neither was to move before the other had gone. The author uses this incident to tell us that, similarly in Japan, if two Japanese bows, neither are to strengthen up before the other stands erect in front of him. Though it sounds a little complicated to us. The Japanese manage it without difficulty and even the smallest difference in rank, standing, age, social position will be subtly reflected in that split second. One man's bow will be shorter than the others. In many cases, there are clear cuts differences in position and no difficulties. According to the Japanese culture, the wife bows to her husband, the child bows to his father, younger brother to elder brothers, the sister bows to all the brothers of whatever age. The author then recollects a sight he had seen in Japan, that of Japanese mothers carrying their babies on their backs in the little saddles and whenever their mother bowed, the babies bow too. Then there are the bowing girls in the Japanese stores standing at the top of the escalators, bowing deeply and differentially to everyone. Next, the writer narrates his experience on a fast train between Tokyo and Osaka, which is 
Tokaido line. He tells us that conductors enter the carriage in a theatrical style, march to the middle of the coach, bow ceremoniously in both directions, and then start checking the tickets. Later, he narrates how even an animal like the deer do bowing. He tells us the reader that in one of the parts of Nara, which is a park, he bought a pack of food for deer. The deer came up to him, looked into his eyes and bowed deeply. The author states that it was not a chance gesture, but it was a proper and courteous bow. The author conjecture that the deer are more imitative and having seen the people bowing all the time, probably they also get into the habit. Then he says it may be something generic and is in the blood of Japanese deer. Finally, he ends the incident saying that the deer, after bowing to him, jumped at him and snatched the little foot bag from his hand. In a humorous tone, he tells the reader that Japanese people who bow with such ceremonious serenity even at bus stops exhibit flippant behavior almost immediately. He tells the reader that as soon as a bus arrives, the bowing gentleman becomes savage like, push each other aside, tread on each other's toes and show their elbows into each other's stomachs to get into the bus. He ends his travelogue on Japan with his humorous observations about soap eating in Japan. According to the Japanese, when eating soap, you must make a fearful noise. Only then will one be appreciated. If the soup eater does not make a noise, his hostess will think that the guest is an ill-mannered lout. On the other hand, if the guest makes some noise while eating soup, she will think that he is not a reasonably well-brought-up European because no reasonably well-brought-up European makes such disgusting noises when eating up the soup. The author tells jokingly that the hostess will conclude that he must be an ill-mannered lout. Now we will discuss the other part of this chapter that is traffic in Brazil. This excerpt is taken from How to Tango, a humorous commentary on South America by George Mikes. The author tells us in a humorous vein how the people of Brazil drive their motor vehicles. He also records his appreciation of the people's talent for decorating their grey pavements. The author narrates his experiences while walking as a tourist through the streets of Copacabana. The very first sentence is a comment about their time consciousness. He says very casually, nobody hurries in Brazil. Then he sarcastically adds, it does not really matter whether you reach your destination and hour soon, a day late or not at all. Then he turns his attention towards the grey pavements in Kobayakabana. He states that the grey pavements in the streets are often decorated with beautiful black mosasses which he calls a unique type of decoration. Then he gives the people of Brazil his compliments for their talent for doing such decorations. He remarks, only a people alive to beauty in their surroundings and who have plenty of time for contemplation during their meditative ambulatory exercises would take the trouble to decorate the pavements they walk on. He uses a pompous term, ambulatory exercises, to refer to their walking style. One should also note that though here he is appreciating the people for their aesthetic sense, he is also satirizing their sluggish walking style or the lethargic attitude of the people. In the very next sentence, he makes fun of their driving style. He tells the reader that the very same leisurely characters when they get behind a steering wheel they drive very fast 
and are reckless having made a comment about their time consciousness now he says gaining a tenth of a second is a matter of grave importance for all of them all the time the reader cannot but infer that the people of a khopa kabana are very lethargic only while walking and are reckless while driving vehicles the writer remarks that buying a motor car in brazil is an extremely expensive event because import duty for importing cars from other countries is very high in this context he also compares brazil with other countries in the south america and says only a few other poorer south american states are in a worse position in this respect then he remarks that complaints are universal hardly anyone can afford a car having said this he proceed to say that yet you find an unimaginably large number of motor cars here then he makes a satirical comment on the craze of the people for buying cars he says the number of motor vehicles is growing by leaps and bounds as if they were distributed free of charge to all and sundry the reader should be careful to note here that the author is also expressing his doubt or surprise at the capacity of the people to pay such huge import duties to buy a car then he explains how reckless the people who drive motor vehicles are he remarks that it is not that drivers do not care about pedestrians the trouble is they are in fact on the look out for them as soon as a driver notices a pedestrian step off the pavement the driver considers him as a fair game he takes aim and accelerates the pedestrian has to jump leap and run for dear life in these lines the author is trying to tell the reader how reckless the drivers are and how they chase people as hunters do while hunting an animal however in the next line he compliments the people for their sweet and sensible temperament he tells the reader that the pedestrian does not resent being targeted by the driver he says driver and pedestrian hunter and prey smile amicably at each other and they appear to be saying i win today you will tomorrow in the next paragraph the author talks about the rivalry between two drivers though the war between two drivers appears to be murderous yet they are good tempered he describes the style of their driving they cut in overtake on both sides force you to brake violently and commit all the most heinous crimes on the road 20 minutes and hour despite exhibiting such recklessness in their driving they smile at you and do not show any anger no hostility and no mad hooting in the next paragraph he recalls an incident he had probably witnessed in a place called avenida presidente vargas he says it is the worst place in brazil known for its crowded and slow moving traffic his statement is paradoxical he says on the one hand the drivers drive recklessly and here he calls the traffic crawling traffic he says even the onlookers will be contemplating the truly fascinating problem how can crawling traffic proceed at such terrifying speed one can imagine the number of vehicles moving at such terrific speed and probably it is the number of vehicles moving at a time together which makes the reader call it crawling traffic he comments about the helplessness of the pedestrian who wishes to cross the road waiting for hours on end then he concludes narrating a jovial anecdote he tells the reader that 
he might witness a situation in which a man standing beside you on your side of the road suddenly discovers a friend of his on the other side and starts waving to him he asks him how on earth did you ever get there the other fellow yells back how i was born on this side the author narrates this anecdote probably to convince the reader how difficult it is to cross a busy road in avenida vargas